and you don't appreciate her the way she needs to be appreciated. You know, for someone who birthed and carried three kids for you between the ages of 15 and 19 years old. What's your major again? Psychology. You guys are pretty much my kids. Yeah, thanks. Smart ass. The seven R has stood out for demonstrating the veracity of telling fascinating stories of beautiful events, but very few had shown how to capture the magic of the human reality that is lived day to day in society because of the problems of the home to representing the essence of the family. A great example of filmmakers who showed the best of their creations and more towards the true African American culture in general, so it is. I speed of the plot written by Booker Snow III alongside his colleague Quashin D. Herring, who also contributed as a screenwriter and more than played the role of the director. I present to all of you the future generation of African American cinema. Taisha Van Buren, Adara Lead, Natisha Hines, Oceania Anderson, Ed O'Neill, C. Rice. This is the press conference of Untouchable. Bueno, bienvenidos a todos, muchas gracias por estar y la verdad es muy gratificante no solo viendo el tráiler haciendo un, una importante aparición cada uno, cada aporte en esta pregunta sí le voy a realizarla a Sally Rice que es muy importante, su personaje fue deslumbrante, me gustaría saber eh, no solo de aprender de su personaje, sino cuál es el jaque mate de la vida real de ese rol y de lo que has aprendido en él Okay, the first question is from Sari, Sari Rice. Uh, this is an interesting question from John. What, uh, what is the chat mate, if, if we can call it in that way, that you can give or you can tell us about this role, not only in this part as Brian, but in real life, I don't know. Maybe the question is, how is uh, this role? Uh, what do you use uh, for your performance to give us uh, such a real character that will be the question in other words oh, okay well playing the role of brian uh when i do any role i try to take anything that i've seen in my life or i've actually been a part of through my life and try to apply it to these roles i also talk with the creators which is Quashim and booker about their vision and discuss them with my vision try to hash it out but mainly it's just life experience uh, I have been through some of these episodes. I've seen people who've gone through those episodes. So it's just really a mixture of life and talking with those two gentlemen. Eh, John me tomaré la libertad de traducir. Dice que él le gusta como actor eh, ver como digamos situaciones que ven la vida para podernos tomar ese rol. Pero acá el, la importancia es pues el dueto que hicieron Quashin y Booker como director y escritor. O sea, ahí para que te, te quede ese dato. Además, eh, antes de darle la palabra a César, me gustaría saber en el rol que hizo Tayesha, ¿no? Sí, uh -huh. sí lo mencioné bien, muy bien. El personaje de la mujer es muy esencial en el rol de cada participación, cada expresión que has hecho. ¿Cómo, cómo usted percibe como la evolución de la mujer afro en el cine más en la actualidad en tu rol que es muy importante this is a very beautiful question then this from Taisha I hope uh, how do you perceive doing this role and I watched the trailer and let me tell you that there is so much it feels so real it feels so 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 like a yeah, I I can see this in like like, uh, like the Bursari was telling that in real life, how do you see in this role the evolution from movie roles from the Afro-American woman perceiving or showing the life, the real life of America of Afro-American women? Tell us, please, Taisha. And sorry if I <laughs> mispronounce. <laughs> no, you said it right. You're totally fine. Um, that's a great question. Really. You, you hit it right on the head. It's a beautiful question. Um, this role, my character, Tina, to me really plays the, the everyday Afri African-American wife, mom, entrepreneur, 
um, is things not only can I relate to in my own personal life, my friends can relate to, um, even even never seen the film, like just certain things. I'm like, you know what? I, I had a friend that went through that. So there were, there. I, I love reading the script. One of the things that I fell in love with was the fact that um, it it didn't glorify negative parts. It didn't glorify positive parts. It was just real. There's so many real life scenarios and issues that every woman can identify with. Es un rol que muestra la realidad de la mujer afroamericana como empresaria, como madre. Dice que no glorifica nada, simplemente muestra la realidad. Creo que con eso te lo dije todo. Continúa, continúa, César. Pues sí, César, por favor. Estamos ante grandes personajes, no solo Ajá. gran director y gran escritor. Sí, la verdad es que sí, estoy muy contento. Y un placer poder estar con todos ustedes. Un saludo grande a todos. Y bueno, mi primer pregunta va para el guionista, me parece que es Booker, ¿cierto? Sí. Bueno, sí, sí lo pronuncio bien, espero pronunciarlo bien. Y bueno, quiero saber cómo surge la idea. ¿Cuál es eh, el origen, eh, la inquietud para crear esta historia? Ok, Booker, this is from César, from Mexico. Uh, and you, as you can see, this is an interview from both from Colombia and Mexico. And Booker, what inspired you to write this screenplay? Tell us. So, um, I, Kwashim initially uh, sent over an idea for the film, um, and he he asked me, could I create the dialogue for it? And um, in creating the dialogue, I have, you know, I have a family of my own with children, and, um, you know, I was able to kind of take not so much just my experiences, but the experiences of, uh, of other uh, families and people that I've come encounter with, um, And it, it, it started kind of piecing itself together. But um, it was mainly to focus on some of the struggles that like my mother, aunties, uh, you know, some of my other female friends, my you know, ladies in my life have gone through. And even some of the things that some of my, my male friends have gone through and, you know, some of my family. And you kind of piece it all together, you know, uh, to create a good dialogue that actually addresses things and could hopefully cause conversations. So when Kwashin presented me with the idea, he gave me free reign just to kind of like take it whatever direction I needed to for it to tell a fluid story, um, but also not to glorify things that um, I think, you know, you know, more typical movies that want to grab, you know, grab attention tend to do. So, um, you know, I had kind of had free reign to do it. You know, it's two minds coming together to make something great. And I, I think we accomplished it and the, all the actors involved and, You know, the production team did a wonderful job of making sure everything was told in a beautiful way. Y dice esa resumiendo, resulta que la idea con el quien llevó la idea es el director Cochin, pero le dio la libertad y Booker se inspiró en mujeres de su vida, pero también en hombres. Vuelve acá con un tema de que no se busca glorificar digamos como ciertos comportamientos sino contar algo muy real y es muy chévere porque mira que el director le dio toda la libertad al guionista o sea la idea del director pero le dio toda la libertad entonces oh. yo creo que eso es algo pues esencial ¿no? continúa César okay, o oh, John no oh, César por favor sí okay. César dale vale 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 esta pregunta es abierta para quien quiera contestarla y es ¿cuál es el mensaje que quieren transmitir o cómo esperan impactar a la audiencia? Okay, this is an open question. So the first one that grab the mic, get the answer. Uh, what is the expectation from, I don't know, the message that you want to get from the audience? Like, oh my God, I, 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 I got that. I don't know, what is, what, what is the thing that you expect from the people that watch this movie? Whoever. More question. Oh, go ahead. Ooh, I was gonna go. Oh, okay, go. Oh, He's not gonna oh, do Ty, it. Ty, Ty, be perfect. Ty, Ty, go ahead, Ty. <laughs> oh. Oh, this. Um, I hope that it. No, causes... go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, okay, okay. I hope that it it really creates dialogue with uh, mental health, with relationship, healthy relationships, and um, really what marriage is made of and what what the fabric of marriage looks like. Yeah, to piggyback off that, to just let other people know that it's just not them. A lot of other people have the same issues or similar issues. So 
is more common than you think because a lot of people think it's probably it's just them so it's just hopefully to it'll show you that hey you know like she was saying uh have more open dialogue and just know that you're not alone yeah that's because that sounds good man and i'm gonna piggyback on both of y'all this movie's about life and it's about life dynamics and everything that can happen in life from the good the bad the ups and downs and what it is is it's a great film because even on set i learned everything i learned different things about life and it's, it's dynamics that people are scared to talk about people are scared to invoke emotion this 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 film right now what i feel is it's going to invoke emotion in people to have that conversation like y'all said but have that conversation in a real way and not 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 be scared to talk about it you know what I'm saying? no i was just gonna say the the cast said exactly you know what i'm saying where i come from with it um we just really want people to have a conversation that they're not having i'm not take tearing down any other producers and any other films but I feel people are scared to really tell the true story and make people have these conversations that need to be had. Because when we have this societal outlet that we are blessed to be able to use, we need to be able to use it to uplift. We need to use it to entertain. And we also need it to use it to teach as well. So that's what I want everyone to take from. I promise that I will translate every last word, but I have to thank you everybody because I feel that more, did, more than an interview, this is a conversation. And I hope these open questions keep going because we want to talk, everybody talk. I want to say something. No, no, if, I'm not, if it's a question, but something I have to tell. It's great that everybody is speaking about not only not glorifying some behaviors, but showing us as, as it is. But it's great to, in, in, I feel now that society sometimes glorifies that thing that we call toxicity. And it's great that you people is all there you are talking no we need to check out the mental health because we not on I, and i'm not talking about marriage marriages we, we see families friendships uh, people that live together but they are living in very no see no see the ambience that affects their health not only in, the, in their houses but in the job so i thank you all to talk about this issue because mental health is the is the real pandemic is the mental health we are going to difficult struggles in this in this aspect so i had to thank you but if you wanna somebody anybody keep talking about the importance of showing mental health in relationships go ahead what's our daughter Zach? yes oh shanae oh shanae yes oh, shanae i wanna where are my that. babies at okay okay hi <laughs> Oh, hi, I will call you Oceania. I, I really love how it sounds. Okay, that's okay. cool. Tell us about this issue, the, the uh, treating the subject of mental health in relationships and in everyday aspects. Um, specifically mental health and relationships, it really shows a true story of how many people don't understand how their actions and relationships can impact people. Uh, for some reason, relationships cause a lot of strife and stress upon people that we didn't realize it's so easy to say oh it can never be me i'd never go through that but when you're in it you find yourself going through the most crazy situations uh trying to validate other people's mistreatment of you because you care about them um trying to validate your feelings and things of that nature and at the same time you're also trying to figure out Am I in the wrong? Are they right? Are we both right? Where's the middle ground? To the point where it literally drives you crazy when in reality, when we think of relationships and love, we think of the e how easy it's supposed to be and how fun it's supposed to be to have somebody. But we don't think about the fact that people change constantly throughout their relationship. And sometimes they have to change and grow apart versus growing together. So when some people don't understand how to healthily grow apart or how to healthily separate, it can cause them to do things such as the parents in the movie. So people take for granted how impactful relationships can be in a positive and negative way. Hi. Yeah. So I'm going to piggyback off of what everyone else said. Um, I definitely think that if you don't have that 
will to grow together or to grow apart and it's not healthy, then it can go left really quickly. Um, but then also, especially if you have children involved, you have to realize that they are impacted by that as well. Whether or not they may say so, but they see what's going on and sometimes they have to pick up and um, grow up a little quicker than they would like to. So that's what I have to say about that. Hey. Yo le alguna pregunta, ¿Eh? dime. Claro, sí, ¿sabes qué es lo más importante de todo esto? Que el rol de la mujer es muy, muy esencial. Esta pregunta va para la Tisha. La Tisha, eh, <risa> tu papel de Brooklyn en este personaje es muy, muy importante. Lo que me gustaría saber es, eh, ¿qué pueden aprender las mujeres de pronto que estén pasando por esa situación? ¿Cuál sería el mensaje de Brooklyn? hacia ellas, hacia los que están viviendo una situación de pronto eh, que la realidad supera la ficción. Hey, Latisha, this question is from you. What can women or people learn about the character or Brooklyn somehow if, if they are, I don't know, living a situation, a situation like their character? I don't know. What can people can, can learn from your character? Well, piggybacking off of the question that was just asked, um, Brooklyn is the oldest. So again, when it comes to relationships and when it's time to exit, sometimes the children take the butt of a lot of it. And when it comes to Brooklyn, she's kind of shielding her younger sisters from what's going on in the house. So, and that happens a lot in real life and, and families because the oldest or even any any one of the children they want to block out what's really happening so the other children don't see you know their parents are arguing this is going on they want to keep things on track on schedule and everything so everything can be happy so to speak so they don't be emotionally traumatized by it but most of the time the kids are still traumatized by it anyway so Brooklyn's character is doing just that she's trying to shield her sisters from what's going on uh she's finding ways just to keep everything on track because her parents are you know dropping the ball in certain areas and i john dame permiso para hacer una <laughs> and i want to talk to the children <laughs> from the movie or the director i don't know because i am watching not only in the trailer but in the things that you are saying and this is something also that i had to tend as a movie goer because John, Cesar, myself, we love movies. I hope you can visit the channel and you will go crazy because it's so many people and we are glad to have you here. Uh, it's great because I see that this movie doesn't do the other things that other movies do that sometimes show the children as, let me say, as a stupid people. And no, children are so active, uh, the young people they are suffering they are thinking because uh, i hate when movies that ah yes the the, the children are, are dumb so <laughs> let them there so who, who, who wants to talk about giving voice not only to the parents but to the children to the to the young every member of the family go ahead whoever grab the mic <laughs> one of the kids want to answer that or Brooklyn will do it. <laughs> yes, Brooklyn. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah. um, again, with like the kid, like like you said, kids are not dumb. Kids pick up on everything. So in the movie, you can see that the children kind of become numb to it. They're used to what's going on in the household, and you see that a lot in real life. Like the kids are just like, oh, that's just mom and dad. That's just how it is. Not realizing that maybe it's not okay, but that's just become their new normal. And so in the movie, you see the kids and each each one of the girls have one, you, like you can see their personalities <laughs> extremely. So you see how they deal with what's going on in the uh, household very clearly. And to, to piggyback off that, um, the biggest thing, me as a director and Booker as the writer, we wanted to make sure that it did not happen where the kids went into the background. Like, cause like you said, a lot of times in the movies, kids are not given that, um, that actual spotlight or that actual identity to be able to really speak freely. And it's just focused on the parents. In this movie, these kids really have their own identity and they really have their own story that we're letting everyone get a chance to experience. So that was a really, really big, keynote that I wanted to do as a director and I really feel like we accomplished that to the, the fullest, especially with the characters that we had and the great talent that was brought forth when we actually filmed the film. So, 
hopefully when they see this they'll uh see how uh kids might be able to handle a situation better than you actually think that they can because we like to shield them so much and i understand why we want to shield them so much but the thing is we need to allow them to uh see what reality is and allow them to just like we want to allow them to fail so they can understand and be better than us on top I, of that I will, oh go ahead go ahead mama go ahead mom okay <laughs> thank you baby <laughs> um i want i want to add that um i love how the movie shows that speaking as a mom a lot of times you don't want to show your child or children that you don't want to, them to see your vulnerability you don't want them to see you at your weakest points when you're crying when you're frustrated when you're angry and you try to hide all of those things and one of the things that i love about this movie is that it shows the effects of that of what happens when everybody tries to pretend like it's okay from the kids and what they really see no matter what and we've all experienced this as kids at some point in our lives we always know what's going on with our parents regardless of if they try to hide it or not we always know so it also shows how it impacted each of the kids differently so for example with brooklyn she became more of a nurturing figure she had to really grow up faster than she needed to and take care of her siblings in the place of her mother and uh, my character she just became a little butthole so <laughs> that's how she showed her uh angst towards her situation with her family she really just started to internalize everything to the point where she couldn't outwardly express and with Adair's character she just became really spoiled so it also shows how the same situation can impact different people in different ways yo creo que tienes una pregunta yes uh, ah, pero, what she, you're going to say something uh, what she, go ahead okay okay Dale, dale, John. Esta pregunta va para Vice. Eh, es muy importante esta pregunta porque siempre me ha dado curiosidad. Pondré un ejemplo que es muy, muy esencial. Si en algún momento de su vida conoces a una persona que está comenzando en el cine y si esa persona le dice, comiéndome una película y sea esta, eh, y esa persona le pregunta, ¿en qué aspectos de la vida me puede interesar a mí? De, de lo que hiciste, de lo que hiciste parte. ¿Cómo sería ese mensaje para esa persona que lucha por eh, su sueño en el cine? This question is from Beats. Ok. Man, uh, the question is, if somebody uh, approach you and tell you, uh, recommend me a movie, and you, of, of course, you will recommend Untouchable, and he will ask you, Tell me the aspect that why this movie is important to you, not only as a member of that, but as a movie as a whole, what will you say to that person? And to knowing that somehow it's a person that wanna add or be in this world of movies. Because this movie is different. When I say it's different, this movie, it touches on a lot of things. This movie, for, for me personally, it touches home. Um, it touches home with my character. It touches home with the other characters. It, it touches on things that I've dealt with the last 10 years of my life. So um, I would tell somebody, hey, you got to take this role. You know why? Because you know what? It, it's you. You know what I mean? You could be yourself. You, you can learn from everybody in here. Um, and it's something that is it's a story that, like I said, it's a story that needs to be told. And a lot of people don't want to tell that story from both sides of the spectrum. But the spectrum is big, and I'm a big part of the spectrum, both sides. And I've dealt with both sides, but you know, it's it's a good it's a good situation for me um, as far as being able to learn from my personal experience and then also learn from the writing and then also learn from uh, filming, doing everything. And, and you know what? It, it, you'll see. It's, it's great. <laughs> Vale, mi siguiente pregunta es para el elenco. Eh, ¿Qué fue lo que más amaron de sus personajes y si hubo algún cambio en su manera de pensar después de interpretarlos? Ok, this is a great question. And ok, whoever grabs the mic, go ahead. What is the aspect that you love from your character and what uh, things change it in the process of the making it? Mm. Anybody? 
Yeah, that's a that good ain't one. Anybody. That's yeah, everybody. that's for me. That's for me. I'm 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 a top to bottom. Top to bottom. Start with that's the, a good uh, one for you, Ed. Talk about parents. Yeah, yeah. They go to Ed. Yeah. Right. So what happened? What happened is the character. When I read the characters part, right, I fell in love with the characters part, right, and then I fell in love. Then I actually read through it. Like when I read through it, I said, "Oh, this is this is awesome." But it's like, like I said, it's a learning experience for everybody. And then when I see who I was against, it was like, oh, okay, now I got to be on my job. And the writers, everybody is talking the good stuff. I, you know, you know, you know, we don't read a lot, right? We see something, we don't read a lot. But then we read and we get more in depth. It's great. And then I got to work with these people and it's just like, hold on, my character is me. In my old life. Not the new life, the old life. But it was something that I related to and it was something that I could bond with, I could fulfill. I could fulfill that actual role in the best way I could. You know, and it, it, was, it was amazing. Like the writing, I felt like the writing for that was just for me, that part. You know, I've, I've dealt with that. I've dealt with what I went through, you know, and I'm still standing. I'm here. You know what I mean? But... Honestly, uh, a lot of characters, the, me, uh, the children, uh, Ed's character uh, all related to me. But how my character related to me is it was just the process of how men go through relationships and showing the process of how men can be emotional and how they go from zero to 100 in that emotional state. So it hopefully people will learn that it's, a, you know, to open up, have that vulnerability, because where I come from, that's weakness. Being emotional, where I come from, that's weakness. Talking about your issues, that's weakness. Even when you get emotional, like as a man, and we do that, because I think when we get emotional, especially over certain situations, we can be more emotional than females. And that right there shows weakness. That's why men try to bottle up. And hopefully by seeing this, they'll understand that maybe we shouldn't do this. Maybe it's another way to go about this. Maybe we should open up. It's really not weak to do that, but due to the fact when how I came up, I was taught that, that it was weak. And as a kid, seeing how the men in my life, uh, even the men in the neighborhood, how they were, like you say, I can tell something was going on, but nah, I'm good, I'm all right. You know, they have those sayings where they try to push it to the back burner and just let it build. And when it explodes, it's not good. Okay, I can answer. I'm sorry my video's off. I'm driving. My little thespian just finished her last performance for the, the day. <laughs> um, so the character, when I, when I auditioned for it, the lines that I read, I was like, oh, that's, I've done that before. That's me. Um, so I, I saw a lot of myself in my character and the things that she's been through, um, which really helped me prepare for it. What I was not prepared for, to be completely honest, is that the movie literally changed my entire life because it changed how I looked at myself, um, how I looked at relationships. Um, even my relationship with the closest people around me, including my, my daughter, um, I, I wasn't prepared for that. <laughs> and that's one of the things that I know is going to be so impactful to women when they watch this film is that it's really going to make them go deep to ask themselves some hard questions and really have some hard truths about where they are and what they believe and where they really are and not just what people see. And Sari, I wanna tell I wanna thank you because I think and I I really wanna recommend this movie because as Latinos we are teach all the men that we need to be the machos, you know, the Latin macho Latino. And no, we need to show sometimes machos cry. Sometimes I mean, we need to be vulnerable because we are teaching that. Oh, don't cry. That that's weakness. And no, I think this is power. We are people with feelings. 
Okay, I really need yeah. to tell that because uh, as a Latinos, we, we struggle with that every day and it's not fair. Oh, there's similarities with Latinos and African Americans, trust me. Yes. And, and it's a big, it's a big similarity. And this movie, you'll see both ends of the spectrum, like I said. You'll see the macho man, you'll see the macho man that thinks he has it, and you'll see both vulnerabilities in every way. So there's definitely, like, like, like Z said, there's a lot of similarities to Hispanic culture, African, Amer African American culture, and to where everything intertwines with each other. That's why this movie is so good, because everything intertwines. It's not uh, X, Y, Z. It's all everything. Everything is encapsulated in one particular goal. And the goal is making everybody think and everybody come out their shell. And that's what I was going to just add real quickly that um, it's a movie about life. I feel like everybody, regardless of your, your complexion, your ethnicity, whatever it is that you believe, I'm, I feel like everyone can relate to it, regardless. It just translates. But what makes it special on top of that is the fact that we are telling a story that's not talked about. Real life is talked about all the time, but real life, real life issues depicted and then not being um, everyone is a villain or there's one villain because there really isn't a villain per se in this movie. The fact that it just shows real life and real vulnerability and we're telling the story as African-Americans is makes it extra special, but everyone can relate to it. In my opinion, anyway. That's that's the correct answer. That's the correct answer. Adara Oshane, Latisha, tell us tell us about your character. Why, what what y'all feel like the people should get from there to answer the question as well. So with Brooklyn, um, immediately I was like, okay. I'm Brooklyn because I'm, I'm actually the oldest of 14 kids. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I already know what it's like to take control and, and have that character. But Brooklyn is so much different for me. I wasn't prepared with how she puts her foot down. I appease everybody. So I'm going to baby everybody and be like, okay, it's okay. I'm going to try to make everybody happy. Brooklyn going to tell it how it is. And so in the movie, um, I really got from Rainbow, I took this back with me too, that it's healthy to have conversations with your parents about certain things. And there is a healthy way of going about these conversations. You know, we don't have to always argue, okay, I'm the adult, you're the child. Brooklyn and her parents had such a positive, healthy conversation that they can talk about anything. Uh, Brooklyn's relationship with her dad helped me with my relationship with my dad because afterwards we got so much closer because I was able to call my dad on his BS like Brooklyn calls <laughs> Z on his, his, his BS with Ryan so um, I think it'll definitely show that you can have a healthy relationship with your kids and you don't have to always keep them in the dark there's a, there's a way you can go about things so that's one thing I took from Brooklyn I'm the baby of the three sisters. Um, you know, when I first auditioned, I didn't know Bray was a role. And they presented me with her and I immediately knew that this role was for me. Um, I was the only child for about 14, 15 years. I was the only grandchild on both sides of my family for about 10 years. So I was pretty spoiled. And you know, my dad always said, um, your daddy's a little girl. Like I just, I just felt that this was my role. And I could just relate, um, you know, obviously becoming a big sister, I had to put my big girl pants on and become a little bit more of my older sister, um, Brooklyn. But um, that's how I could relate to this. And I was just the happy child. I was the child who didn't want to see them fight, but you know, I would, con like, I, I'm trying to think of the right words. Like I saw my mom and saw my dad go through things and I would be there for them in real life and in the movie. So I took that from this movie and I told them about it and they're like, whoa, I mean, this seems like this is your real life and it is, this, is, this happens in real life. So it was really relatable. Guess I'm next. Um, <laughs> with Tamia, 
I can't say that I act like Tamia. I cannot say that that is my personality at all. But I think like Tamia acts. I just repress it. So, um, I also think with Tamia, how we relate is I was very observant with the, everything that was going on with my family. My family is a very my family is like the macho family, not macho man and macho woman, but everyone kind of had, had to hold everything in. You weren't really, you weren't really allowed to express much. Like if you were to cry, if you were to feel sad, it'd just be, it'd just be like, well, what are you crying for? You got a house, you're blessed, you, you know? So you really didn't get a chance to really feel as you should. So I had to do a lot of internalizing and especially with my parents, I saw everything they did. I saw everything they went through, but I was not necessarily allowed to say anything because I had to stay in a child's place. So when it comes to Tamia, I could understand her frustrations because the way she acted was the way that I thought. So I did want to be withdrawn at times, or I did want to just say, screw everything. I'm going to disrupt this whole family if I'm getting disrupted. Um, but I never did it simply because uh, I don't believe your circumstances should impact how you act towards other people. Whatever you've gone through, you've gone through, you have to learn from it. You have to go through it. You have to get through it. But you can't inflict that pain or that frustration onto other people. You just really have to learn how to deal with it in a healthy way. So that's kind of what I got from Tamiya. She, she's going to learn how to deal with it in a healthy way. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. We'll, we'll see if, if there's a part two. Right, Q? Uh, I want to say something because it, this is like a crazy fact from the channel. Uh, in one of the previous interviews, we interviewed Danilo Reynoso. He's an actor from Republican Dominican Republic. Uh, it's crazy because uh, you are the second people to talk about a movie about the family. The, the movie he had, this is called La Familia Reina. And it's crazy because, and I want to ask, I, I, I want to ask you, you know, this is oh, for Booker and for Q. He, this movie became the movie from, from Danilo, like uh, Epiphany, because he was doing the movie showing how it's a Latino family. And uh, it, this is hard because the screenwriter uh, in the movie, they, uh, a spoiler, they talk about a person that is ill and dies. And later, later, uh, not, not, not saying that this is going to happen to you, Booker, but the later the screenwriter dies. And it's hard because everybody in the crew feel like we are not making a movie. This is a family. We are showing that. Latino families is there not, oh yes, we are the machos. No, no, no. Latino families, they are like every family, they learn from their mistakes. So I wanna ask you for you, how do you feel? Or the invitation to please show us how are the families in every culture that every family in the world maybe we told different, but we are families that hold together. And this is a question also. I really, I really like the, all the symbolism with the chess. I love chess, so I want to know more about that. I, I love it, by the way, all the art from the movie. So, go ahead. But you want to go first, you want go? You got it. Follow your lead. All right. Um, the, the, I like how you said the whole culture part, because when I came to Booker, I said, Booker, we're going to do an all-black film all black film we're gonna not hire any other ethnicities because i wanted us to show that we can take an all black cast but we don't have to be the stigma of what everyone thinks that we are when it comes to when you think of all black cast or uh, a black woman or a black man or kids and things of that nature i wanted to take what I grew up on, which is I grew up in a family. My parents were married almost 40 years. I've been in a marriage type family. I'm the baby of the family. And we don't go through the things that we see on TV. So I'm tired of seeing that. So I wanted to show that, hey, listen, what you guys are thinking we are, and it's not that. You have to go back past the layers. We're layered. Like you have to really peel back all of the layers, all of the, the lettuce, all the cabbage, like you have to really get into the inner core so that you can actually see what we're actually trying to deliver. Because in this movie, we're delivering a message and I need people to really understand that this is a message for anybody. Like Ty said, no matter what color you are, you're going to get something from this. It's going to make you have a conversation. The only person that's not going to have a conversation is if you're not human. If you're human and you watch this, you're going to have that conversation. So, 
when it came to the the name of the film, um, also the the whole chess piece thing is from the the checkmate two words checkmate. That's the production company, but it's all about kings and queens because in my heritage. That's what we have to understand. And that's what we have to get back to is we are from royalty and we have to carry ourselves as such, no matter what you're doing, whether you're delivering newspapers, whether you flipping burgers, giving out fries, whether you working at the real estate company, whether you're a nurse or a doctor, you have to understand that you carry such a big weight because of the skin we were blessed with. And that's a major situation when it comes to me. And I made sure that, hey, listen, yeah, I got to understand is this is a film and I'm putting a lot on you guys, but you have to perform to a certain extent because I'm, we're not going to halfway do anything when it comes to this. Because one, our heritage is that on the line Two, breaking the stigma is the most important piece. And three, finally giving us a chance to really tell the story that we want to tell. That's what we're here for. Yeah, the, the film for. Uh in writing it um the main thing i wanted to focus on is love and love doesn't really have a, a color or barriers to it usually the barriers that are created are created by us and that's typically what i what i was trying to portray in, in creating the uh the flow of the film and the dialogue it wasn't so much about trying to uh even tell a perfect story there is no perfect journey you know we make decisions and there's uh, there's a reaction for it. There's a reaction for every action. So, you know, in, in dealing with love and it not having these caps, um, there's no guarantee that love doesn't hurt, but it's how we respond to the hurt. Um, it's no guarantee that it's going to feel good for prolonged amount of time. It might only feel good for short spurts, but it's always about the decisions we make. And with Untouchable, it like we had a very difficult task. Um, with every portion of the film, there's no easy character. There's there, you know, there's no way that anybody can leave this film set and leave unscathed by something. And from there, they had decisions to make. They had to decide on whether to be better people or worse people, because everybody left with a piece of them still on set. Like when you watch the movie, not just watching a bunch of actors just act, they're actually leaving a part of them on that film. You know, there's nothing simplistic about the film from the directing to the writing, set design, nothing. There's no easy pieces. So there is there's no small role. There was nobody we could take out the film and go, uh, we could do this without them. There's no <laughs> there's no character. So I think um, and with all of them really embodying each character and putting the love that they have within them into the character, um, it, it really added to the impact of the film. I don't think there's anybody who will watch the film and say they didn't take something away from it or uh, again, like it doesn't leave a small mark. And that's across any ethnicity, you know, the, like the love is in the film. And when they see it, I, I believe that they'll be able to take that away from it. Yeah, and another thing too, we, we wanted to not Hollywood it at all. Like I needed people to understand that, um, we, regardless if this was an independent film, whether if it was a high price film, we wanted to make sure people understand we wanted to go back to our roots where we're here to tell stories, forget the cameras, forget the glitz and glamour, forget all of that. What can you bring and deep down and deliver when I tell you, hey, this is the situation, make me believe it. Because if I don't believe it, then there's no reason for you to be that character. So like, even when I casted these characters, it wasn't a casting of a character where I wanted a certain name. I wanted to feel a certain vibe, a certain warmth. I wanted to get goosebumps. I wanted to, to feel like the, the ground was shaking when they're saying these words, whether they're hollering, soft speaking, or even just sitting there giving me a gesture of their eyes and their facial motions. It was very important to feel it. Because if I can feel it, everyone else can feel it. And that right there was our biggest goal. And a lot of times nowadays with these movies and TV shows, not to take anything from them, we've gotten past this whole where we want to see talent. And one thing about Checkmate was we want to bring back the talent that it was all about. It's not a, this shouldn't be luck 
This shouldn't be because you know the director or you got a brother that works here or it should be because you're that good. Like Denzel said, it doesn't matter about the likes and the posts at the end. Are you talented and do you have a story to tell that you can actually make me believe? That's what it's about. Period. Well, una última pregunta, pero estaba dos en una para luego mostrar el trailer y es para Oceania, bueno, con la pronunciación y Adara, ¿qué podemos aprender de Bray? Sí, y Tamia, entre esos personajes, ¿y qué puedo aprender Tamia y Bray? Y también la pregunta última va para Kwashi y Booker. Eh, Booker, los felicito por grandes producciones, Girls, Wolf, Hola. Genial, pero ¿cómo se ven ustedes dentro de 10 años? Como grande. Wow, this is two questions. Uh, so I'm going to start with the first because later we will show the trailer to the people. Okay, this is from Oceania and from Adara. Uh, you can tell us again uh, what are the aspects that you most love from your characters. I don't know if you can tell us something more and uh, what can you learn doing as a siblings, I don't know. And this is from Booker and from Quachin also. Uh, this is a crazy question uh, because you had worked together and of course you had worked in very interesting uh, movies or, or proposals, but how do you see in the, I don't know, in the next 10 years? <laughs> okay, but first with Oceania and Adara. Go ahead, Bray. <laughs> all right all right <laughs> so what i learned about being Bray is that no matter the situation you can always find something to be happy about there's always something good out there um whether or not your parents are going through it you got to realize that um you know you have your sisters who love you they're gonna be with you you have your parents who love you Um, and sometimes that works for, depending on the person, you have to realize what works for you. And that worked for my character, that worked for me in real life. You just think of the happy things. And so I took that and I left it on the film because I've been through that. And I took it back home and just continued to do that. Okay. Um, the thing that I really admired about Tamiya's character was that she really just did not care anymore like she was herself completely unfiltered and she didn't care how anyone else received it though she may have been reserved in her thoughts of expression when she felt it she felt it and she did what she had to do to just say this is me i don't care if you like it or not i don't like you sometimes but guess what i'm still gonna be me so i love her grit and her sarcasm And the fact that, hey, she was her and she owned it. And real quick, going off of what she said, you will see how we're totally opposite and you'll see how that comes together in the movie. It'll be great. I will just let you know that. That's all I got to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But you want to go first on the other question? What, what you going to do? Yeah, I'll go first. Uh, oh, I, I love it. I love it. Okay. Oh okay. man, in 10 years, I don't think I'll be able to, I don't, I won't be able to find Kwasi. <laughs> he go, he go be too big. I, 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 I ain't gonna be able to find him. His career gonna be, <laughs> yeah. So I don't, I don't, I know what well, the thing is, that's my brother. So, I mean, you know, our relationship would be what it is. Like that's my brother, we're family. Um, so it's, it's bigger than any job or, you know, piece of art that we could put together like we're blood without actually having to share blood so um with that being said uh with this i think it'll develop its own legs um to where uh it'll add more depth to us as men more so than just careers um and as humans Um, right now, I think the, the thing is you, we put so much on what we're, what we're looking to do that makes us feel good or that creates a purpose for us that we forget to treat each other right and like humans. And the one thing I say about me and Kwashim is we don't have anything that divides us. Um, we don't always agree, 
but we're able to have dialogue and you know we we look out for each other like we you know we don't ever do anything that that uh that beats one of the, each other down like we're always looking to build each other up um Kwashim is a lot more dynamic than I am and he's a bigger personality so he he's built for a certain light uh well I'll say a different light than I am completely um and we both we we support each other's light so if at some point he goes book this is going this direction I need to change directions I'll be okay with it like I'm gonna support it you know it's you know journeys 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 all have you know limitless missions within the journeys you know and I'm 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 a little bit older like you know so and my kids are almost adults <laughs> so at this point it's like uh, my life is going in a different directions than Kwashim's uh he has other things going on you know I don't put it personal but he has other like beautiful things going on that might take things in a different direction and I would never stunt that growth I'm a support it and be there every step of the way so in 10 years um if this has its own legs and it and it moves into something else I'm with it if not it's okay I'll still be at the barbecue you know <laughs> so I'm not I'm not I'm not really too worried about it like I'm just enjoying it at the moment to be honest I mean, book book is modest at times, but like, and I've said this multiple times to multiple people. It don't matter how big I get. This, this family that I built with the with the whole two way checkmate uh, brand, yeah, book, Booker will always be around. The, these other castmates will always be around because I'm always going to make films because I'm in this industry to help people too. Like I, I remember when I first started, I didn't have a lot of people that helped me. Like I try to help people now is because I want to be able to give people the actual outlet to be able to let their talent shine. So uh, in this next 10 year time frame, we have a ton of different films that we are working on, writing, that we're gonna be producing. And I, I see bigger things coming. Um, and it all starts with this first film, Untouchable, because this is our first feature film that we're actually putting out. It's gonna be on Amazon Prime, which, which, is, which is major, even though it's an independent Amazon Prime. And that means we have to push it ourselves just having that outlet to be able to prove that independent filmmakers are still as good as these big and big filmmakers is that's what we're trying to tell people. It, it, I put my pants on the same way you do. That doesn't mean because you you have a certain production that's here. That doesn't mean that ours can't blossom into that because it all starts from something. To build something, you have to actually start from actually putting the seed in the ground, watering it and waiting for it to grow. So right now we're in that growing phase and I, I don't see any end in sight. Uh, these next 10 years is going to be uh, a magical. They're going to be beautiful, uh, especially with God's grace over everything because we're, we're extremely blessed with great talented people that have entrusted in us with their careers and have that really have came behind us and believed in our vision. And I just thank each one of those people that are on this phone and the people that are not on this phone today that actually put in for Untouchable and these other fans that we're going through. I just thank y'all for trusting us because this is not just a dream for us. This is our reality. And we put our heart, sweat, tears and our love and we'll put anything on the line to be able to give you guys exactly what you guys ask for and exactly what we know is deep down in you that we need to bring out. See, that's that's why I went first this time. <laughs> I'm a good setup man, Kwashi. I'll throw the ball in the air, eat a dunk. <laughs> <laughs> okay, time is running off, but I gotta say something. I got to I I will say this for my friends, John and Cesar, as uh, indie filmmakers. Thank you, Kwashit. <laughs> we really put our pens like the big ones. And be, uh, if being indie filmmaker in any country and part of the world is hard, but we are doing it. I think John is going to show the trailer. John, vas a mostrar el trailer? Yes. Okay, we are going to see the trailer and we end up because time is running out. So, okay, John. Let me be the shelter.
Wow. Oh, bravo. Bravo. Es una generosidad. O sea, yo creo que Kuechen está por llorar, porfa. Desbógate si quieres, por favor. Eh, QQ, if you wanna cry, go ahead. <laughs> I'm not crying. Somebody's cutting onions somewhere. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why that trailer. I've watched this trailer dozens of times. It gets me emotional every time. I'm not quite sure why I haven't gotten the root to it yet, but I don't know. I don't know. It still gets me though. Remember that Latinos love, love tears, so go ahead. No, it's a joke. But man, no, congratulations. As we say in Spanish, aplausos. Bravo. Buenísimo. Yes, a antes de tomar la foto, yo quisiera decirles que lo felicito a cada uno de ustedes. Créame que el efecto shooter de la, de la fotografía y la canción lo hace uno llorar. O sea, y la verdad, yo lo felicito. Admiro a cada uno de ustedes y para que se estrene una plataforma grande, más grande, que se ganen muchos premios, no solo en premios, sino en la familia que perdure. John said it, and I will translate. I think John is talking for all the group. He said that, yes, we watched the trailer, all the effects from the cinematography, that is beautiful, by the way, and the music really gets us. Yes, if you want to cry, cry, because I know that good art It's translated beyond the words. I don't know if it's because sometimes some people say, oh, I understand English, but I understand their feelings. We hope that this get more premieres. We hope in festivals, and I hope in festivals in Latin America, in bigger, in, in bigger. Yeah, I hope I don't got Amazon, but I, I will tell somebody if I can watch it on Amazon in, in Latin America. Is <laughs> and we are glad as a, I, I we need to say something for the channel. As you may see, this is a little channel. We we are growing with with the audience. It's a channel for people from the our city, our small city, Cucuta, learn about cinema. And we are we feel blessed because we had, as we say, Danilo Reynoso talking about a a family from the Republic, Dominican Republic. As you may see, we got great Afro -Amer people from the Afro-American community, like Jim Freeman, he's a stunt double. As you may see in the channel, he's also Bill Dude. Um, and he really talks about the importance of the people telling their histories far, far ahead from the video studios. So, nah. Los felicitamos, we congratulate you. Oh no, John Cesar, ya está acabando el tiempo, así que digan. Oh, you are amazing. Thank you for this. Bravo, bravo. Thank ah. y'all, man. Thank y'all. Uh, Thanksgiving Day, man. Check us out. Amazon, baby. Untouchable, man. These guys work our hands in these two words. Checkmate. I'm sorry, two words. Checkmate. Over. Damn, right there. <laughs> and, and you, uh, before the time is running off, uh, invite. Uh, You are inviting the people, but say something to the people from Latin America. Hi, a bit high social media, so we can follow the movie. I know. Okay. Instagram. Go ahead. Oh, what's that? Um, yeah, check us out, man. First off, um, go on imdb.com, type in Untouchable, the movie 2021. Check out our trailer. Uh, you can go us on Instagram. It's Untouchable, the movie, at Instagram. And then, of course, on Facebook, it's the same thing, Untouchable, the movie. Um, definitely, man. Also, go into the Two Words Checkmate. Uh, you can go on there on Instagram. And yeah, so Thanksgiving Day, we'll see everybody on their TV sets. Whether they're sitting on the couch, riding in your car, or just taking a flight, man. Make sure y'all support uh, one of the best independent films that's ever going to drop this year. Okay, bueno, John, lo que tú digas. No, muchas director. gracias a todos ustedes. De verdad. Muchos éxitos y estaremos pendientes para el estreno. Uh, thank you so much. Of course, we will be and please let us know with the premiere song so we can catch up. Uh, Definitely. Thank, thank y'all for having us. We really appreciate you guys even taking the time, man, to come out here and ask you great questions. You guys are our first outlet to even uh, let us speak about the film. There's a lot of people that have reached out to me, but uh, with the way that John reached out to me, I really felt that you guys were a great outlet to be able to have that first uh, encounter with. So thank you so much and, and blessings to you guys, each and every one of you. Okay, time is running off, so before it runs up, thank you so much in behalf of the channel. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ciao.
Thank you. Adios. Bye. Thanks, Until everyone. <laughs> <laughs> ah, let's go. Yes. Bye bye. Hey, don't forget to follow your son, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter.